Hey guys, this is ACATS. I have a new workflow that I put together for you that is designed to showcase this new node I put together called the Audio Reactive Dynamic Dilate Mask. And essentially what this node does is it adds this sort of aura or mass dilation around your subject that expands and contracts in time to the beat or whatever audio or music you input as part of your input video. So I'm just gonna run through this workflow really quick so you get an idea of how to use it. Um, basically, here you have your input section. You're gonna input your width and output height of the final video. You're gonna have your frame skip here. So whether to use every frame or every other frame, uh, how far into the video you wanna start with skip frames. Here's your input video. You can adjust how many frames to load using the frame load cap. Um, here's your seed. You can also get some information uh, about the source video here. So frame rate, width, height, and uh, FPS. So here you can actually, this is where your subject mask is generated using SAM2. Um, so if you leave this group here unmuted, then it's going to try and create a mask for your dancer. If you already have a mask generated for your dancer, you can mute this group and unmute the upload subject mask section here, and you'll just upload your, your subject mask video, and it'll use that um, instead of generating a new one every time you run the workflow. Over here you have your prompt, so this is just a standard batch prompt. Um, you can follow the same formatting if you want to change have the prompt change over the course of the video and you've got your negative prompt down here over here you just have some utility functions and you don't really need to worry about this unless you're trying to mess with the workflow here you've got your subject masks so if you have multiple dancers in your scene and you have different colored mask set for them. So say I had an additional dancer here that was green and then maybe another mask that was blue, then I would go ahead and unmute these two groups which would capture the mask from each of those different subjects. But for now, since we only have one subject, the mask is red, I'm going to leave this get subject mask group unmuted. So up here is where you have your audio processing nodes. So this takes in the input audio from your video and using a amplitude schedule basically just cuts out the, um, the range that corresponds to bass notes, which is gonna give you know, more amplitude on sort of the beat. You can also change this to be more in tune with the mid range or treble, treble range of the song, if you prefer. Um, you don't necessarily need to mess with this, but if you're not getting a very good result on your graph, then I would try and mess with the range and also maybe with some of the amplitude basic settings. Over here, you've got your dilation mask. So this is where we actually create the dynamic audio reactive mask. So for now I have the white and the cyan dilate masks unmuted. Um, and the main thing to keep in mind here is you can change the shape of the mask. So circle or square. Circle is very accurate, but very slow to compute. Square is fast to compute um, and is best when you're just trying to get the mask to the size that you want. So you can adjust a couple other settings here. You have the max radius. So this is how large the mask will be when the amplitude is at one, and the min radius is how small the mask will be when the amplitude is zero. So you can play with that and get a sense of, um, you know, what kind of effect you want for your video. And so basically here I have two masks enabled. I have the white and the cyan. And one thing to keep in mind is that the masks are composited from large to small. So you want your white audio reactive mass to be the largest and the cyan to be the smallest. And if you don't do that, then you might not see uh, any of your white mask. You might just see the cyan mask. Likewise, you might not see yellow or magenta if you enable those as well. 
Uh, here's where you're going to see your final composite video with all your masks. If you already have pre-rendered a video and you don't want to have to keep uh, generating the dilation masks, you can mute all of these groups here and enable the override composite and just upload your, your final composite mask video. And then every time you run this workflow, it'll just use this, it'll scale it, and it should just work. Um, down here, you have your model section. So here's where you can input uh, one or more checkpoints to merge together. So right now I'm using absolute reality and paradigm. You can also add some LoRa's. So I recommend adding the anime LCM T2V LoRa with a weight of 0.18, which just helps to kind of stabilize the final result. You can add your VAE here. Uh, moving on to animate diff section. Here's where you can set a motion LoRa. You can also play with the effect and scale float values if you want to increase or decrease the overall movement in the final video. Over here you have all your IP adapters. So red, green, blue are going to map to your subject. So red subject, green subject, blue subject masks. And then afterwards you've got your black IP adapter which map maps to the background. So you can set a background image here. And then you've got white, yellow, magenta, and cyan, and these map to the dilation masks. So since I only have the white and the cyan dilation masks enabled right now, I'm only um, unmuting those. One thing to note is if you make sure you keep the cyan um, IPA group always unby unbypassed, because if you don't, then you might get model errors where basically the case sampler will complain that you don't have an IP adapter model. So just keep this one unchecked whether or not you're using it. Uh, over here we've got our control net section. Um, you can play with these values if you want to adjust the final result. Uh, it's going to depend on you know what kind of result you want. So it's just going to be trial and error. And then down here, you've got your generation uh, preprocessors. So you can, you know, you're preprocessing the, the line art, depth, and open pose videos. If you've already generated these videos for the entire video and you don't want to have to regenerate them every time when you're just messing around with the workflow and dialing in all the settings, you can actually mute them, each of the groups, and then unmute the override sections, upload your videos here, and then every time you run the workflow, it'll basically pull from these pre-rendered videos instead of regenerating using the preprocessors. So it just saves some time. Finally, we have the sampler section. You can bypass this group when you're just trying to dial in all of your masks and make sure all of your settings are good. And then once you're ready to test it out, you can un bypass it and run and you'll see the output in this first output section here. Um, if you're trying to do a final render, then I would recommend using the high res fix group as well. So just unmute that. Um, and then when you run it, it'll basically take your result from the first sampler. It'll upscale it slightly in the high res fix group. And then you'll see that result here. So it just adds detail and slightly upscales the final result. So that's basically the whole workflow. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Um, the credits for this workflow are me, Syncratic, um, Jay Boogs, and Banadoko. I highly recommend you join the Banadoko server if you're new to this uh, comfy UI and you want to learn from the best. So thanks for watching. Hope this helps, and I'll see you guys in the next video.